This year, I decided to get back into Warhammer, both on this channel and in my personal hobby time. In my last video, I talked at length about what that meant for me in both work and leisure hobbying, so I'm not going to go into that here. Today, we're actually going to make something. Make something and paint something. Something Warhammer. It felt good to be diving back into the reason that I got into the hobby again in the first place. The only question was, what would be my first project this year? I've got a lot of stuff in here, plenty to choose from, but as always, I've got to think of an angle and I've got to think of a thumbnail. Sisters. Sisters are cool. I've always liked them sisters. Maybe I'll... Something or someone was moving around in the old workshop. I hadn't been in there for a long time. The air was musty, it was cold, and it was dark. It was a box of dragons. Had they always been there? Or had someone left them there? I took it as a sign. So join me as I dive headfirst back into Warhammer for the first time in a year and do some epic dragons. Okay, so my challenge with this video is to produce a dragon that can freely stand on an elemental breath effect. Nothing really new in terms of concept here, I've just never done it before. You see planes and model gunships firing missiles all the time in dioramas and being held up by the smoke trails. So this can't be much harder than that. Having not done a GW kit in a very long time, i had forgotten what the kits were like. When it comes to the new stuff, pretty heavenly I would say. These are probably the nicest kits I've worked with since I got back into the hobby a few years ago. And of course, if you can think of any other kits that are this nice, do let me know in the comments as I'm a little bit out of the loop. Though this leg doesn't fit at all, so I've spotted a major flaw with this kit already. Ah, no worries, they actually just pack the body in the box upside down. Which is definitely no fault of mine, no sir. Overall, chunky, satisfying, and tough. And at least these wings ain't metal wings. So the plan has evolved ever so slightly in a dramatic, massive way. I like these dragons. I ended up making two dragons. Uh, I was just gonna do one and do ice breath as like a tutorial on how to do ice breath, I think. Um, that is way too sensible and easily achievable. So, we're going to do both dragons. One is ice, one is fire. Uh, we're going to do a diorama. Each one is going to be held up by the dragon breath effect. And some poor bastard is going to be getting ice and fired in the middle. So I need to go back to my ultra vague sketches and do another one of those. Plan that out. I've got all the bits. I ordered that before I went on a long weekend away. If you want to see Hector just wandering around in the Yorkshire Dales for like five days then uh, head to my instagram and it's it's hector's hector's very gray trip to the yorkshire dales very much worth your time debatably so yeah project is now longer time is now shorter let's crack on <laughs> the foundation of this diorama is going to be a 3d printed plinth and this wicked piece of cork bark that i found for cheap in a garden center I 
I'm always looking for fun new ways to get stuff painted fast that don't tax my multiple sclerosis and fine motor controls. I've gotten much better with layering recently, but with a fast turnaround on this guy, I am going to stipple. Stipple, stipple and more stipple. Paint goes on neat out the pot and is jabbed into the model rather than brushed. We can do the same with our gradients and highlight, just raising the brightness of the paint and using smaller brushes. And keep in mind that a neat paint can go a long way in terms of coverage, so don't load the brush too much. Same rules apply for underneath the wings, but because these aren't going to get the same amount of airtime as the top of the wings, I'm just using a slightly blue leaning off-white. The ridge scales along the back are a mixed grey with a dash of light blue added in. Everything going on here is either a neutral or a blue tinted colour, just to keep everything a bit more together. Some heavily diluted speed paints are going to serve as both a wash and a glaze to help tie our patchy gradients together. Heavier deposits in the recesses and spread thinner over the raised parts. And for the undercarriage and under the wings, I mostly want to use it to tint that creamy colour a little bit more towards a bluey grey. And for those edges, just dry brushing and stippling on some neat white. The white from the Tooth & Coats range is pretty good at dodging that chalky finish that I've noticed with a lot of other white paints, but your results may vary. What's up guys, Tony Slap of the Bass here back in perpetual full of motion and I'm here to talk to you today about today's sponsor, Squarespace. You ever find yourself sitting there watching another cool episode of Ghost Brothers and you think to yourself, meh, I wish I could make a Ghost Brothers fan website but I don't got the technical know-how. Yeah, niche, very niche but stay with me. Well now you can, because Squarespace allows you to pick from a near infinite variety of instantly customizable templates to make web design a complete breeze and you could throw together a page in minutes. But that's not all guys, Squarespace ain't quite ready to give up the ghost just yet. Yeah, this one's a ghost themed one, I, I, I don't know why but we're here now. Because Squarespace be hitting hard and fast with a fully customizable online storefront and that lets you list inventory and make direct sales on the internet. And if you already got a brick and mortar store that may or not be haunted, you can link your little website up with your shop's existing EPOS system. <laughs> Spooky. Ain't no ghost in this machine, guys. But Tony, I hear you ask. How do I get my fresh and funky new website out to the world? Well, that's easy, and you ain't gonna need a seance to do it. Introducing the browser-based domain acquisition tab, guys. Slap in the name you want on your website in there, check availability, and make that purchase. Are you ready to start your online journey today? We're heading over to squarespace.com forward slash MSPaints and use the code MSPaints at checkout to save yourself 10% off your first website subscription or domain. With red, we're going for basically the same kind of principle starting with a medium crimson, working up to a primary red, and finally through to an orange. Scales are a mix of red and grey, and the undercarriage is definitely more a red leaning cream than it was with the Ice Dragon.
since the divide on the colors is a lot more dramatic with this dude, I took some extra time to blend the gradients between the two colors. Again, just nothing but stippling. So I think my Army Painter Soft Tone has gone off and turned into Bovril while I haven't been using it for a few years. Normally this goes on a lot less patchy, but for now, it's got to do the job well enough. Moving on to metallics, thankfully gold goes real well with both blue and red, so these cats are going to have themselves some matching little outfits on their first day at school. I use Vallejo liquid gold as a treat to myself, because the finish on it usually means that I can get away with just a wash or a tint, without really much of a big need for a highlight instead. Gilliman Flesh Contrast Paint does alright here, kind of does a similar job. But Crusader Skin Speed Paint absolutely delivers a gorgeous smooth finish over the flat surfaces. That's where this paint has the edge. With the dragons done, it's time to have a little cry. And remember, we have an entire diorama to build. And primarily, the breath effects that are going to hold these guys up. I'm not in a playing mood, so the power tools are coming out to make life quicker. Electronics wise, I'm using a care package courtesy of Daffith at Terraintronics. You can find the link to his YouTube channel and how all this stuff works and his web store down below. The main piece of kit holding the entire lighting rig together is going to be the Terraintronics Conway board. It's a simple little board that runs a 5 volt USB power with a dimmable output on it. And as usual, I'm using a wire wrap tool instead of a soldering iron to pull it all together. got some noodle LEDs that I'm wrapping around the brass rod, using white at the core and higher up, with an orange in the middle. And then a red noodle at the bottom, with some flickering tea light LEDs. Reasoning behind this, fire burns whiter at the source and gets darker as it cools and moves further away. So we need to cover this dragon's vomiting Christmas lights nightmare diorama up with some smoke and ice. And the tried and tested way is with dyed cotton balls. You dye them and then you leave them to dry. Regular watchers will know that I love my ghetto homebrewed sculptor mold, thermoflock pulp, plaster and water. I've got about 15 minutes working time with this stuff and that's before it starts to set. And then another 15 minutes wait after that and we can actually carry on working on top of it. Okay, not that it matters much, as you will see in the finished product, but we're going to go hard on some ground textures now. Oh, 
after a coating of neat PVA glue, starting off with some tea leaves, and then some Tesco special mixed herbs. Smells good. After this, start layering up some finer grit materials. Even though we're going to paint all this, it's still important to get as much texture variation on as possible to simulate realistic ground cover. As a last little finisher, some sand from a beach in Northumberland. Really fine sand. And this is going to unify all of the bigger grit stuff that sticks out a little bit too much. To seal this up, I'm going to spray on some rubbing alcohol to start the capillary action. It smells real nice too. I'm That's why that smells nice. Yeah, well, this stuff is alcohol based though, so this will technically actually work and do the job, but you know, it'll smell nice as well. After leaving this guy to dry overnight, it looks absolutely shocking. So it's time to prime the underside and pick. You know the jokes about how when you squeeze an army paint a paint out and it's nothing but clear medium that comes out? Well that did me a solid there. It went on my jeans but no pigment so that's a pair of jeans that ain't as ruined as they could be. Thanks army painter. Coke bark has a really, really nice natural rocky texture, so we're not adding anything to this. We're just straight up dry brushing to make it look like rocks. I can see why railway guys love this stuff, it just looks, it just looks the part with minimal effort. It was late in the day and I was feeling pretty reckless and decided to use some angry earth sad on this guy to tie a little more of the colours together and add a wash. For a little extra flair, I've got a mixture of some quartz crystals from a seaside rock shop and some Geek Gaming Scenic's blue crystals. Stuck on with those well placed LEDs, these are actually going to illuminate quite nicely. Decent. With the cotton wool dry, we can glue it on and shape it how we fancy. No real advice here, just work in thin layers and build it up and keep your internal is this dog shit filter switched on. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fucking decent, that. All right. Same goes again with Mr. Freeze, but with this cone of cold, I'm actually going to wrap the cotton wool a little bit more to get some spiral shapes in there. Then, as a little secret ingredient, we dust the wool with a matte varnish and sprinkle on some 0.5mm snow static grass. Honestly, this stuff is just like instant snow and frost. You really need any other product more than this if you're just doing snow and bases for dioramas. I don't normally do plants on my dioramas because it's normally expensive and this stuff isn't easy to search for and it isn't normally stocked in many hobby shops, but I got fairly lucky with my finds with this one. A little bit of AK Interactive, cheeky little bit of Woodland Scenics, and some super cheeky cheap finds on Timu. And we are disgustingly overprepared to cover up all the work that we've invested into doing the ground textures. But at least I know those textures are on there, and that's what matters. I'll go more into diorama foliage down the line when I have the time to do it, but one last little hack is to bring back our matte varnish and to dust the snow static grass back onto the plants surrounding the ice cone. Brings it all together. And done. It ain't perfect, and it ain't how I expected it to look, but it is done, and done is more important than perfect. Originally I'd intended to sculpt a cone of frost and then make castings in clear resin and line that with LEDs but sadly there just, there just wasn't time to, you know, make all that, let it all cure, make casts, whatever. Maybe in the future I'll do it. This project was an awesome way to make my return to Warhammer and Age of Sigmar, and honestly, dude, dragons are just cool as fuck at the end of the day anyway. Thanks massively to my Patreon community for supporting the channel, and more importantly, supporting each other as we all learn and grow through our own little hobby journeys. I'll be seeing some of you for the big meetup soon, in our big 10-man Stargrave rumble. Don't forget to like and subscribe, that helps me massively muchly, unless you absolutely hated this, in which case, please like and subscribe, that helps me muchly. Until next time, cheers, I'm out of here.